Hi scholars, it is Miss Breeding here to help guide you through second our second week of guided reading lessons. Um, for this lesson, right now, all you need is your PowerPoint. You will get on Get Epic later, but right now, I just want you to keep your PowerPoint on your screen. Before we begin, I just wanted to let you know that I have touched base with most of you all, you all's parents, and I have been hearing really good reports on you all's work ethic and how you're focused on your assignments. I just want to remind you that tenacity is not only expected in school, but it's expected outside of school too. So as we continue to go through different modules in guided reading and in math or in writing or in language arts, just make sure that you're continuing to push through, showing that tenacity that we know you all have. So let's get started. So last week, we were introduced to two different types of questions. We had literal questions and we had inferential questions. Let's take a second to review what those terms actually mean or what those types of questions are. So for literal questions, these types of questions can be answered by textual evidence. This means they can be answered by words in the text or by pictures. Okay, so remember when we're answering a literal question, that means you could go back in the book and say, I know this is my answer because right here on page two, it tells me blank, blank, blank. Or in this picture, I can see blank, blank, blank. That means you can actually prove your answer through the text. For infer inferential questions, then that's where you have to make an inference. So these types of questions can be answered without sexual evidence. This means you have to make an inference, which means you are using information you already know and information you read from the text or pictures to answer the question. So inferential questions, remember that keyword is inference where you are making an educated guess as to, hmm, what do I think? Based on what I know, what the text has told me, how, what do I, how do I think I can best answer this question? Okay, let's get some practice in really quickly. I want everyone to take a, a couple of seconds to look at the picture here um, on the screen. We can see there's a little boy and a little girl, and the little they look like they're sharing an ice cream cone. So we are going to first answer the questions and then determine if it's a literal or an inferential question. Question number one: What is the little boy doing? Is that a literal question where we can look at the picture and tell what he's doing? Or is that an inferential question where we have to think about it? Right, that's a literal question. The little boy is obviously sharing his ice cream cone with the little girl, okay? He's sharing his ice cream cone. Next question. How does the little boy feel about sharing his ice cream? Do we know that? Does the picture tell us how the little boy is feeling? Do we have any words to go along with this picture to tell us how the boy is feeling? No, we don't. Okay, so this is where we have to make an inference. What is it that we can tell from the picture? What I see is that it looks like he is offering the ice cream cone to the little girl. It also doesn't look like he's upset. He looks kind of like, sure, I'll share my ice cream with you. Okay, so for me, it would, my answer to this question would be the little boy feels okay with sharing his ice cream. He feels um, nonchalant, meaning he's not showing too much emotion. He's just like, he feels okay sharing his ice cream. It doesn't bother him. He doesn't mind. Okay, what do you think? How would you answer this question? Great, make sure you include details on what made you feel that way, okay? Let's go to our third question. Are they inside or outside? That's a literal question, okay? Because we can obviously see grass outside, so they are, or grass in the picture, so they are outside. And last question, has the little boy eaten any ice cream? I want you to answer that question first. Hmm, I agree. Yes, he has eaten some ice cream. Is this an inferential or a literal question? Literal question. How do you know?
it's definitely a literal question because you can look at the picture and see that the little boy has a milk mustache from eating the ice cream. All right, scholars, so the next thing we need to do is to uh, log on to get Epic and we're going to the text scarecrow that we started last week. Um, signing, I'm going to my account. And remember, mine looks a little bit different, but you all know how to get on get Epic now. Um, it already has me logged in. I am going to the search box here at the top and I'm going to enter scarecrow. And remember it is the purple book here in the center. So when you read, um, you're going to finish the rest of this book. It's only a few pages. Um, very simple, very easy read. And um, I have, similar to last week, um, I have questions to go along with the remainder of this chapter. Okay, so let's go through the questions first. Or the directions, it says, finish reading the book Scarecrow on the Epic. When you are done, answer the, que answer the questions below. Then determine if the question is inferential or literal by writing an L or I on the line after each, each question, okay? So, question number one, what did the children do to the balloons to keep the birds away? Number two, how did the popping balloons make the birds feel? Number three, how did the scarecrow help the strawberries from, uh, become perfectly ripe and sweet? Number four, what will grandpa, grandma, and the children do next year to keep the birds away? And number five, what did the family, why did the family thank the scarecrow and say, now you can guard the blueberries for, or, for us? And lastly, what will the birds do while the blueberries are growing? Okay, so I am going to help you with number one, and you will answer questions two through six independently. It's a very simple assignment. Again, the purpose of you completing this sheet is to make sure that you're able to differentiate um, literal versus inferential questions. I want you to be able to identify um, the difference between, between the two types of questions. And remember, on your step test, you'll have different um literal or factual questions and different inferential questions. And it's very important for you to understand what type, how to answer it to make sure you're giving an accurate answer, okay? So let's go to our text and I am going to answer the question, what did the children do to the balloons to keep the birds away? All right, here's my text. Starting here on page 11. For a short time, the birds kept away because of the rattling noise from the swinging tins. But before long, they got used to it and came flying back. Just when the strawberries were nearly ripe, the children thought of another idea to chase the birds away. Grandpa helped them blow up bright balloons of all shapes and sizes. They drew faces on the balloons and gathered them into bunches that they tied to the scarecrow's arms. So I'm going to stop here and I want you to take a moment to analyze the picture. What do you see going on? I see over here, grandpa is blowing up a balloon. Here I see different shapes and size balloons. And I also see um, this young lady here, one of the children, she's drawing faces on the balloons. This one looks happy. This one looks um, a little aggravated. This one looks very upset. I also see a goofy looking balloon here. I see a angry, two angry balloons here. And I also see birds look like they're yelling at the balloons. So let's go back to our question. It says, what did the children do to the balloons to keep the birds away? Well, here I see the children thought of another idea to chase the birds away. So I know my answer is coming up. Grandpa helped them blow up bright balloons of all shapes and sizes. They drew faces on the balloons and gathered them into bunches that they tied to the scarecrow's arms. So now with all this, if I don't want to copy this entire part of the book down into my answer. I want to condense it and to make it into a very strong third grade sentence. So to restate my question, remember, always give a race response. To keep the birds away the children that blew up bright balloons 
and drew faces on them. Do you all agree with this answer? Is there something else that I could have included where it's not too much information? Because we want to make sure we answer the question is what did the children do to the balloons to keep the birds away? They blew up bright balloons and drew faces on them. Okay, so I believe that I answered that question in its entirety. I answered all parts of that question. Okay, so am I done with question one? Can I move on to question two? No, I cannot because the second part of my instructions say, determine if the question is inferential or literal by writing an L for um, literal or an I for inferential on the line after each question. So here on my line, and it's going to move because I'm on the computer, but um, what did the children do to the balloons to keep the birds away? How did I get my answer? I looked back and used textual evidence. I looked at the pictures first, and then I went back and read the words. So on the count of three, tell me if this is a literal or an inferential question. One, two, three. Yeah, it's give yourselves a pat on the back. That was a literal question. Okay, so on your paper, you will write an L here. Okay, so this is what a complete answer looks like. It, you use a, you at least restate it and answer your question. And then you also determine, you write an L or an I to determine if it's a literal or inferential question. So you are going to complete the remainder of this lesson independently. You're going to come finish reading our Scarecrow book, and then you're going to answer questions two through six. Okay, all right, see you next lesson, scholars.